first time he came to K-State, he was pretty thin, and you wondered if he, you know, could play Division One basketball, being that it's that thin. You know, we we kind of chuckled at Jack putting him in at the guard position. Uh, it turned out Jack knew a little bit more about uh, what was going on than we did. He frustrated Jack Hartman because he wouldn't take over games as much as Coach Hartman wanted him to. He always said about Rolando that I need him to be more selfish, but Rolando was so much about the team concept that he didn't want to go score 20 a night, and he certainly had the ability to do that or even more. He was smooth in everything he did. Um, if you go back and watch film of him, the way he could elevate on a jump shot at 6'6", and you know he would extend that jump shot uh, high above a defense. I, I remember getting really irritated at Rolando because he, when you get down into defensive position, that puts your face at his at, at elbow level. And Rolando was so quick, he'd do these back and forth moves. And you know, if you'd be leaning around on one side to try to tap the ball away, uh, he'd you know he'd move like that, and you'd come this way, and then he'd come back and elbow you in the head. <laughs> he, but you know, he he did that to me so many times. It's like Rolando, for God's sake, will you you know will you quit moving around so much? You know. It's just a little bit hard to track with him. In many ways, he was a player ahead of his time because he could break you down on the dribble, uh, extend that jump shot up over any defender he wanted to. But I think the thing that maybe people don't appreciate about Rolando is what a tenacious defender he was. He had the perfect base, the perfect body to be a great defensive player. He took a lot of pride in being a very good defensive player. And remember, this, is, this was before the era of the shot clock in college basketball. So you had a lot of games that would be in the 40s and 50s, so possessions would last a lot longer because teams would try to delay games out a little bit, particularly when they weren't as talented as K-State, they would try to lengthen the possession. So you had to be sound defensively so you wouldn't get beat with that backdoor layup at the end of the, of the possession. But Rolando was just, had all the attributes of a great defensive player. People talk about shut down corners in football. That's what he was on a basketball floor. He was long and athletic and just could take one or two options away from everybody they played. It does come from the intensity of the young man and the attention to detail, but I always go back to the coach watching at a practice that those opportunities came in practice. And if you didn't run back on defense to defend, Jack Hartman would stop practice and you would hear about it. Well, he was a great defensive player, but he had no choice in that deal um, because you didn't play for coach unless you guarded. He could do everything on the basketball court. I've always been a little jealous of Steve Fiziak because he got the shot. I think he had the, he described the big moment, I think, in Kansas State basketball. I think anytime you talk to somebody who was anywhere associated with the K-State program in the late 70s and early 80s or was even a fan, uh, the, the dominant image is Rolando hitting um, the baseline jumper against Oregon State in the NCAA tournament. They rotated the ball and I'm, I'm waiting for them to bring the ball back out to the top of the key because they're going to get it to Rolando Blackman on the right wing and here he takes that one dribble because he's done it not just today against Oregon State at Paul Pavilion but because he's done it 500 times at practice and he takes that one dribble that tremendous leap tremendous balance rather than off center this off center that and he lined up that shot and drained it like I had seen it 500 times in practice. It was an incredible moment, but it was a moment, once again, of great coaching, great teamwork, and I like to use the uh, quote, planning your work and working your plan, and they worked their plan to perfection that day. That got so much publicity, you know, with the cover of SI and, and uh, the guy who made it, um, you know, in my opinion, is was as good a player to ever play here. The thing that always amazed me about Rolando was how high he jumped when he shot. And, and you look at that picture and it's, it's, you go, wow, the kids don't jump that high today when they shoot it. He wasn't only willing to do the glory things, he was willing to get in there and do the dirty work. And when you have a team leader like that, you've got the table set for a great team. One of the neatest things for me about Rolando is after his NBA career, his long NBA career was done, he came back to K-State to work on his degree. Um, and walked around campus with a backpack on his back, uh, just like any other student. Didn't think I'm a, you know, multi-year NBA player who's, you know, who's who was the man on campus 15 years ago. I'm just, I'm just Roe. I'm just another student. Um, very graceful, very down to earth, very humble. He had just a terrific skill set. I mean, 
because of his athleticism and his knowledge and the way he was coached, he truly was one of the greats of all time in the college game period, not just at Kansas State in my, my opinion.